You piece of dirt. No, I'm wrong. You're lower than dirt. You're an ant. Let this be a lesson to all you ants. Ideas are very dangerous things. You are mindless, soil-shoving losers. Put on this earth to serve us. You're wrong, Hopper. Ants are not meant to serve grasshoppers. I've seen these ants do great things. And year after year, they somehow manage to pick food for themselves and you. So, so who is the weaker species? Ants don't serve grasshoppers. It's you who need us. We're a lot stronger than you say we are. And you know it, don't you? <laughs> well, princess. Um, Hopper, um, I, I hate to interrupt, but... Uh... You ants, stay back! Okay, hi everyone. Welcome to CRWS Movie Decoding. Today we are doing a decoding of Disney Pixar's A Bug's Life. So I guess we can just go around and before we even have any questions, just what everyone's thoughts are on the movie. It can be decoded in a lot of ways, I think. Yeah. Uh, can I go first? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I think the, the movie was really interesting. I like how they got their power back. Now they like have a happy life. And I feel like the grasshoppers are kind of like white people. I, I just feel like the grasshoppers are white people like controlling all the black people, like all the ants. So that's what, that's what I think right now. Wait, so if you think the... the... Or I guess let's let's go around first with everyone before I ask the next question. Well, for me, it was very nostalgic. It was an amazing form of like um, nostalgia, but with more open eyes and knowing like certain phrases, like it's meaning now. So it's just, it was it was a better filler, but um, I completely agree with Zuri, um, but it can also be observed through um, social class and ants always, has that synonymous to like worker so working class versus the elite who do nothing so it's quite interesting well not nothing just strategically make ants work for them and yeah so yeah I'm I'm excited for us to decode this this is gonna be great I don't think it's incorrect to say the elites do nothing. I would say the elites do nothing. <laughs> yeah, we'll, get, we'll get into that but yeah, yeah. I, I tried to correct myself they definitely have they do the mind work that makes the ants make money for them, the consumers? But we'll get there. <laughs> uh, and Mr. Andy, you want to go? Yeah. Uh, yes. Um, I. I, I, <clears throat> I, I agree with with uh, what Z has said. I do think the ants are symbolically either consciously or some. Consciously represent representatives of uh, the Negro population, Black people, uh, non-white people. Um, uh, I, I also um, think the uh, grasshoppers symbolize the uh, mutant albino uh, race, the Caucasian race, Caucasian race, people who've been classified as white. I do believe that it's that uh, that's um, it symbolizes them, um, and I, I think there's a lot of symbols in the film, and I can't wait to like you know, you know, share information with y'all. You know, nice folk. Cool. Yeah, I'll go. Um, I agree with basically what everyone said for the most part. Like for me. 
this movie is super nostalgic because I also just watched it like all the time. Um, and I, but I was like able to watch it under kind of like different perception now. So it was really interesting. I agree with uh, Z and do you want me to call you Mice? Mice? Mary, fine. Okay, Mary. <laughs> um, <laughs> that I think it has to do with white people. I think the grasshoppers. I, like it's for me I'm like I don't know if the grasshoppers are like white people and like the ants are non-white people the grasshoppers are like rich people and the ants are like the working class or even like that the grasshoppers are like colonizers because they're technically like you know going to other people's land taking their resources coming back they like so I was like, that's really interesting. I think it can be interpreted in a lot of ways. So I thought it was cool. And especially, well, I guess I wanted to ask a follow-up question because like, okay, so if the grasshoppers are white people, then who, what are the birds at the end that kills the grasshopper? Nature. That's, that's what nature. I thought too, yeah. And that's like, they have, they have this constant conversation of nature throughout and then they it plays out in that way. So like the bird would basically be a lion, um, a giraffe, so going out in the wild, and I'd say maybe. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I think that the birds were nature. And I think that um, at the end, like because the grasshoppers wanted to exploit the ants, they could have built some sort of coalition together where they could always find ways to protect each other from the birds, from nature, like, you know, but instead they're like trying to have power over. Cause I think the whole, like what you were saying, the whole movie is about like hierarchies. Cause they always talk about, there's a, this, there's, this is the order, you know, the ants do this, the ant, what is it? Like the ants I, take the I, food. I thought... Yeah, go ahead. I thought the film was a, more about white supremacy. No, yeah, I agree. But we were saying, like, what do the birds represent if the if the, the uh, um, grasshoppers are white? I, I definitely, I definitely interpreted uh, inter interpreted them as the uh, the nature, definitely nature, because uh, it didn't really, it wasn't westernized at all. It was more like. I'm not doing this to be evil. I'm, I'm intrigued by you and I'm going to eat you, you know. And um, it also reminds me of um, how in, in, in the video game, The Bug's Life, like I used to play with, with um, 05 T6, there's a, there's a mission where you have to run from the bird and it's very scary. But um, even as a child, I realized that the, the bird was the, the good person. It was trying to be good, you know. At least trying to be good. <laughs> what do you think, Liz? I agree. You agree? Yeah. Yeah, I agree too. I think it's interesting too that they made the bird feed its kids. Because that's why I think it's also like nature too. Like, because yeah, like I agree with what like Mr. N was saying that it's just like the like it's almost like the bird is just innocent in all of this like an innocent bystander or something because he's just he's just doing what he he's in the world to do yeah he exactly children. but the grasshoppers even say they have too much and they're getting more right because the other grasshoppers are like why are we even bothering the ants they already have we already have all the food we need yeah so and the guy was and then he's like and then he's like and then he says it's not about more it's about keeping them in line and i think that's a really important piece of dialogue because in, within the white supremacist system um not white people primarily black people have to be oppressed 24 7 365 days and that's that's to keep us in line you know we have to be jam-packed in the prisons have to be, um, you know, jam packed in these facilities with that for uh, people who are mentally, um, you know, unable to cope and function in this 
dysfunctional society. And um, I, what you, I, I, had a, I had a question. What do you guys think about the ants? Sorry, before you ask the question, I just wanted to talk about that same scene. I go for it. Because you talked about the, the dialogue, and that, which is very important and reflective of what, of why. Okay, so the systematic killing of, of um, black men and women in America, I definitely believe is a strategic tra traumatic experience that we're constantly supposed to relive, recreate in our minds and continue to manifest to keep the system in place, definitely. And that statement basically suggests almost, uh, it provides a very good theory as to why it continues no matter what, no matter how much it looks like justice is coming. Um, we get after after a while when a distraction is needed that's something that's systematic that happens and put, is put in place and that statement is very impactful and i also thought the visual imagery was impactful he didn't even have to say a lot really when um he had thrown it and he was like that didn't hurt that didn't hurt and then the impact of all of the the nuts or the grains hitting him that you'd you'd automatically feel pressure that's just showing the fragility of um the white mentality around um black people coming together and like staying united that's the fear like they believe they'll be crushed in all ways they don't there's no such thing as like harmony if we have a, a code as well which is very unfair but yeah i just, I just wanted to share that about that same scene what was your yeah. question and i also really <laughs> like that scene because um they, they literally say something like there's more of them than us, which is like everything that we read about how there's more non-white people than white people in this world. So I thought that was like, wow, like I thought that was pretty profound. But yeah, the visual image of just like all of those grains falling on him, I thought that was just really epic in terms of really understanding the amount of power that the larger collective of non-white people can have, you know, if they're aware of it. We just link arms. <laughs> yeah, we gotta link arms, but I'll think to my uh <laughs> so uh, I I asked what was that? Oh yeah, so the question was I really enjoyed how the children were able to take part in defending um, their land, their resources and their, their future, you know, their, their future possibility of existing. And I wanted to know what were your thoughts and about seeing um, children um, function in that way. Um, I like that part because um, children what did it make you think about like what kids can do um that kids can do anything yeah. <laughs> but like like do you did like i think it was interesting because i felt like the kids were always the most brave and they were always the like they were the ones who came up with the plan first, right? They were like, let's do this or something like, and so I feel like the kids were less stuck in that fear. And so they were like the ones who were able to like execute the plan, you know? So I thought that that was pretty awesome. Same, I absolutely agree. Um, that's that the whole, thinking about the whole, um, role that the children played in the, in the movie it they were like innovative they they got their inventions they were ready to try it out they um what else it was so cool they um the yeah um when they see somebody like a role model that's good to them they they take it on like they're like i want to be a stigma on a girl. i want to be a manta ray i want to um and they all had the ladybug thing so like it just showed the impressionability of children and then um, when, even when the adults had given up on themselves or they got intertwined in their own world or it just got a bit um, more deeper, like deeper, the children still had the, the plan and they kept it going. And if, if it wasn't for them, 
or the, the, le the lessons they had learned, they wouldn't have been able to, um, to continue. So it just, it just showed the, the importance of um, teaching the, the, the younger generations because yeah, as adults, we go in and out of um, our passion and, but, and the world or we can easily get distracted. But if, if this, this is what the children are seeing and um, role playing, they, they will continue with or without you because they've already found that light and, it, and as children, they keep it going. So yeah, so I really enjoyed that. I really enjoyed um, that play out and that understanding. Yeah, I agree. And what I like too was that like the kids have the play at the beginning where they're like, you guys are the soldiers and they kind of like reveal the truth and then they end up being like the heroes to an extent. I thought that was really cool. Like, and they were able to bring that out of everyone else too. Because ultimately like when that fire starts and everything, it's like the preservation of the children is what like puts Flick and everyone into like overdrive in terms of like, you know, I, I yeah. Um, I had a question too, like, what do you guys think about just like the role of technology in this movie compared to like what we read in like Urugu and stuff or in, in general, like, yeah. Like, do you, how do you think that they use technology in this movie? Well, I was, the question I was going to ask was, um, what do you guys think about the Flick character? But he's very innovative. He is very connected to the, like, as being goofy as well and not, and being that outliner or outsider or the awkward one, that's the kind of trope he would have fit in, in today's modern society. But, um, well, I, Earlier then, that that was the closest thing to it, if, if it's the clumsy one. I don't know how to describe it, but he um, has that natural connection where he makes things out of, he's, um, he's resourceful with nature. And that for me, um, that for me is very much like how, what Yurubu talks about, um, that African connection with nature and using nature to, um, using nature and not basically working against nature. And yeah, so he had that like, it's almost like a child's eye. It's very, yes. So I, to, to answer your question more, I, I felt like they showed it, they, that's how they showed it. And um, the more um, they, they were willing to listen to Vic and the more that they started believing themselves, the more that the whole community actually started using the technology and um, all the little inventions that <laughs> made it easier for them. Okay, um, sorry, my, to answer your question, sorry about that, yeah. <laughs> to, to answer your question, um, I think uh, the technology that was used was very, very um, useful because it allowed them to find resources, and not find resources, sorry, to like uh, scavenge resources a lot easier. Um, yeah. Um, basically, yeah, it allowed them to, to harvest resources more effectively compared to someone else who was there. Uh, I like, I think Quick's character is really cool because if, 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 if like he didn't do anything or if he would never spill like the thing, then, it, then they would have still been like getting the food for them and like never and like still wouldn't know that they're more powerful that's why I like and, and I like his inventions cool too he's really creative oh uh, yeah I agree I think I think for me like I I've been thinking about it in two different ways because like one perspective I'm like yeah like the technology is really cool and not just and like the way that he utilizes it it's like based in like creativity and like this kind of like idea of just like one wanting to like wonder and like wanting to take chances 
and I feel like the di like obviously the difference between him and everyone else in the colony is that like he takes chances and risks and everyone else is so scared of even taking the littlest risk right in the beginning they can't even walk past the leaf like that's how mentally stuck they are <laughs> which I thought was really interesting I thought the technology was interesting too because it's like it's not as if there isn't the technology because if you when they once they go to like the city there's like all this technology there's all this stuff but it's so ugly like when I watched those city scenes I was so grossed out it just looked like ugly and like so unhappy and just disgusting and I thought that that was like a really interesting like I guess split of like this is like technology in a society that's supposed to be like so-called progressed you know like progressed in in that they're not like living in villages or whatever and it's like this ugly place where everyone treats each other horribly whereas like where they on the island it's like they're, they're completely isolated but then it's also like because of their isolation they're almost like stuck I guess because they don't have anyone to bring up knowledge from outside. So I thought it was interesting, like the role of technology. And I think at the end, they're able to bridge it in a kind of beautiful way where they still hold on to what they are, like their colony is, but they're still mm -hmm. able to utilize the technology to benefit them, but they don't glorify it. You know what I mean? I like that. I really like that. It um, reminds me. It reminds me of like what you're, the statement you're making is exactly what Flick did when he basically was like a wanderer and went off to go find um, to go find um, help, and he went out into the sea. I did get that same feeling, but I feel like it's almost purposeful, especially when it comes to like like representation of like um, the insect kingdom. They always like make the trashiest place. Like the, the okay, I don't know if you, if everybody here has watched Ants, but in Ants, the Utopia place is literally a trash bin. <laughs> literally a bin. <laughs> so like, I, I feel like they do this play on. It's like I don't know if it's a play on thing, but I just noticed it. But um, yeah, and the city is grimy. Like it, we, the people make it beautiful, which is like the the circus. They made it beautiful within the inner city, and it was even too soft for the city. The city wanted to fight them off and they couldn't even do that. So um, yeah, I don't have to, yeah, I don't have to describe what I'm saying. I'll leave, I'll leave it at that for now. I wanted to ask, so there's a, there's a, there's a Beedo character in the film who flies. Um, I felt that character was a highly represented, representative of a black person. I could be wrong, but I felt like that was the uh, the uh, his purpose in the film was to serve that he was a functioning, you know, black uh, character. Which one? The uh, the beetle character. The big oh the beetle. The beetle. Oh wow! Great observation. Um, I do. Right? That. I think so. Yeah. Does that make sense? Does anyone yeah, agree? because everybody was scared of it at first, and then like any movement was like ah, and then they just realized he was big and friendly. Very, very good observation. So he's like the Terry Crews character, where he's like yeah. supposed like that he starts the movie off trying like looking scary, but then he's like scary. yeah, he he's always carrying and transporting people or our resources. He's always. Like his body is, uh, his body acts as technology. His body is used to make their jobs easier. So he's like a mule. Yeah. Um, there's, and also the, the fly character. Was the, the fly character is very interesting. What do you guys think about the, um, the how they were, how the, the insects were represented the, 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 the carnival and sex were represented and their lifestyle. Do you think that symbolizes how Black people live in like the ghetto and live in environments that are less than sustainable and less than pleasant? Or, or any thoughts on that? 
Yeah. Um, I thought that was interesting, and I, I agree. I think that they're almost they are like black people or non-white people at least, because they all have to play up to like their stereotypes. So like, but then I like how the movie shows that a lot of them are like opposite of the stereotypes, like the ladybug. They make the grasshopper this like stereotypical Asian mystical thing. And like the <laughs> black widow is like supposed to be like super like, you know, creepy evil, but she's just like this kind of like awkward chick or something. And like, um, <laughs> I don't know. I just thought it was interesting that like, everyone is supposed to be a stereotype but really they're like a lot more multifaceted than that which does make sense if they represent like non-white people and also just the idea that they can just be thrown away so easily too I thought that was interesting and the idea that they're all like actually like serious artists but they have to like exist in this really like lowbrow field of work yeah yeah uh-huh. It, it it's crazy because in in the in the movie the ladybug they, they think it's a girl but it's just actually a guy and in real life there's ladybugs that are they they look all the same so I don't even know if they're a girl or a guy <laughs> I just call them girls so yeah it's it's that icon yeah that was interesting it's too. funny definitely love this statement actually because um that's is that's exactly it we. They're ladybugs to us. We don't male or female. They're ladybugs. So that's it was a very cool statement that the the movie made by. Play, and they're bring. called lady ladybugs. <laughs> my favorite. It's my favorite as well. My favorite character. But um, yes. Did you also notice um, this is this um, it's around Trey's question as well. The cultural other other by having um, the fleas be um foreign and no one can understand them and that was what they presented to the white supremacist um, um, grasshoppers and because Trey actually made this comment because they were fighting each other they tolerated it and were entertained by it and were allowed to, it to be a distraction but it was like they they were the other culturally anyway but they had to use the, the other other in order to, to further distract them so you're saying that the fleas are the other, and they the use culture. the uh, the, the, fleas fleas. the cultural other other because it's already a cultural other. Talking about the twins, the little the, the twin of the two, bugs. Two oh, twins. the ones who like didn't speak the pill bugs or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. They they said they speak Latin or something. The subtitles. Oh, did it? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, but Trey, could you um re- can you word your question again for me, please? Uh, my question was basically, well, we already um we already concluded that um the ants in the film live like oppressed people. In the film, there is a uh, line that is said by Flick where he says, you know. We are impressed. We are oppressed insects, and I think that's uh, really interesting because in this film you have a victim of oppression um, expressing that he's oppressed. But in real life, it's very difficult for victims to say, "Hey, I'm being oppressed. I'm subjected to racism, white supremacy. I'm subjected to torture." on a regular basis whenever I'm outside my um, place of living or dwelling. So um, the question was like, do you, do you think the same could be said about the other bugs in the film? Do they also live like oppressed people, like the carnival folks and the folks who were in the bars, the folks who were gambling in the city? Yes, most definitely. Um... They're all there drinking away their sorrows as well. <laughs> <laughs> and um, fighting circus acts. Um, acts. So yeah, they're very much so. Um, I'd also want to say um, that the statement that you made about the press, um, Flick had said that as he was flying off on the little um, 
what those things, what are they called again? Dandelions. Dandelions, yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I used to call them wishing flowers or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> But, um, when he was on one, when, when he was flying off, he said, um, "This is for um, oppressed ants, any for oppressed ants everywhere." And that statement just kind of reminds me of like when, um, like um, African people like moved to like their co- the the country that colonized them, depending on what language they speak. Um, if they speak um, Spanish in their country, then they try and move to Spain or Portugal. And if they speak. Um, German, they try to move to Germany. If they speak French, they try to move there. And like in their mindset, they're like freeing themselves of their oppression and going off into like the land of milk, their milk and honey. And it's only just to further oppression there. But that's the mentality that like, I'm going, I'm going out to venture and learn more. If you have a, like a strong mindset and, and you go over intention, then you can actually come back like Flick did and try and bring hope, if you know what I mean. But um, yeah, I just thought I just thought that was very important. That um, that was a, an important um, observation, like the, the statement he made as he was making that journey. Yeah, I really like that part too. When he's like, "It's for oppressed ants everywhere," I thought that was like really beautiful. Um, I was wondering too, like one thing that I thought was really interesting was just like, like um when Neely Fuller kind of talks about how like, you know, like irrespective of whatever so-called position of power a non-white person has, they really have no power. And I thought that the queen and the princess were like the perfect showing of that because they're supposed to be like, you know, the people like, or the ants that are like the highest in that society, but they literally have no power like they're completely controlled by an outside group. So I thought that was like really interesting. Yeah. I don't know what your guys' thoughts on that were. I uh, I totally agree. Um, I, I think that's a great observation. I, um, I did notice that. And um, I did notice that uh, the, uh, the uh, people in power were quite fine with the situation until um, Flick started saying that this is not okay. Um, and a lot of the ants really show a lot of symptoms of what a lot of real victims in real life uh, show symptoms of, which is denial, or um, complete uh, avoidance of the problem. So they don't talk about uh, racism, white supremacy. Um, they don't acknowledge it in any shape or form. And it just continues to abuse them. And that would have been the case for uh, the ants in the film. But, you know, thank, thankfully, uh, Flip, Flip was uh, able to, um, you know, get people to be more constructive. But I told you that the, uh, the, the supposed to be in power had very little or no power at all. I, I I remember in the movie one time when, when the queen said that uh, we're supposed to give um the food to the grasshopper. I mean, what? The yeah, the grasshoppers. The the grasshoppers or oh, the grasshoppers? They're supposed to give food to the grasshoppers. That's in their blood or what they do. What that's what their ancestors do. I remember when she said that. What do you think? What do you think about that? Uh, like, people who think like that. Do you see that in your life? No, I don't think they should do that. But do you see it? Like, is that something you've heard before? In other words, mm, I don't think so. I don't think so. But I just, I just don't. I don't know why they do that. Do you think thinking like that is gonna help you to like be brave? No, it's just making. <laughs> Giving more power for you to not to be brave. Yeah, I totally agree. And I didn't like too at how when she was laughing and the princess was like, oh my god. When she was laughing at the queen was laughing at who? At, at what she said. When? What did she say? Just when when she said that 
when she said the about the the ancestors when we do that. Oh, it's in our blood. Yeah, like she, we was, have to she was. She was. She was laughing, and the princess was like, "Oh my god." I mean, I think that's interesting too, because I wonder if the queen says that because she doesn't actually have to do the work. Because I mean, there's actual ants that are like passing out. We don't even know if they're actually dying or not. Because at one point, he's like um another one like we lost another one yeah. and like i think it, it is easy for the queen to just laugh and be like this is just our lot in life because she is somewhat detached from the actual physical work yes. of life absolutely yeah. just stand there playing so yeah, yeah. i was thinking i've literally thinking to myself um is it possible that she doesn't even think of like anything innovative or allowing them to change because it literally is not her time. She doesn't, not not doesn't care, but she's gonna be carried no matter what. So it's, there's no really demand or pressure to um, to keep to try and change anything or think of anything else because the old system kind of works. I th- I find it very interesting as well how um, um, the grandmother, the the mon- the the queen mother is very much like in support of flip encourages flick in a way because I saw that almost as um when you're like old like some it, some if somebody's interested in you at least respect them so she kind of gave flick like lots of room to be him to himself rather than shutting down how like the younger um um royal family were trying to um yeah I, what question did I have um Maybe really quick I wanted to um respond Mm-hmm. I um, thank you Z for bringing up the part that I forgot to bring up about um, the grasshoppers saying that the, uh, the ants were born they exist to serve them um, that is also a very similar if not almost identical rhetoric that's used for uh, white supremacists they believe that black people and, and all non-white people are on planet Earth to serve them. And I thought it was really, um, you know, interesting that the grasshoppers had the same philosophy for the people they were, the bugs they were oppressing. And um, very, very powerful line. And um, especially given the context, you know, these bugs are coming to their, uh, their island, their land, and, you know, making them making them their slaves, basically. Um, that, was, that was it. What did you guys think about that within that, all those queens or whatever? The queen, the princess, and Dot, there was no male heir, king type figure. Like, do you think that contributed to their situation? I feel like... Um maybe the the i feel like it looked like in the story like they were all males that were working yeah it kind of looked like that maybe if there was a king but then he was working a lot maybe he just got really old that he died or something but it looked like all the males were working but i don't i didn't see any females working but i could be wrong but that's what i see yeah, I think in this society, um, it was the males were, you know, working, delivering uh, the resources while the uh, queen was probably breeding more ants. Um, that's what I, I think. But also, I, I noticed a trend in uh, Disney films when the characters are not. Um, traditional characters in the sense that they're white. Um, the uh, central characters often only have uh, one parent. Uh, so um, I even noticed that in their newest film, uh, Rhea and the, and the Last Dragon. I uh, mean, um, Ms. Nebula watched it. Oh, I, I wanna watch that. <laughs> Sorry to, yeah, go ahead. It's, 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 a, it's a very interesting on film. Disney Plus, so they watch it Okay, so I'm going to end the meeting and then we're going to start again. Okay. Okay.
Okay, we can keep going. Uh, I think one of the questions that um, O5 posted was, um, what were the injustices? What are some of the injustices that you saw in the um, movie? Um, well, for myself in the film, I saw physical violence being um, inflicted on the ants. I saw them uh, being uh, through labor being exploited through labor. Um, I think even through education, them not knowing kind of, you know, that they outnumber the um, grasshoppers was also another way of uh, manipulation and a, so some form of uh, injustice. And of course, taking their resources and threatening their land just some just name up for you yeah i was gonna definitely say resources um time consumption and labor um all that time spent being scared and gathering food for them could have been spent thriving or just just basically keeping them on that that wheel of survival rather than being able to meet their their needs to fight to self-actualize as a community Okay. Um, yeah, I would say the main, main injustices are obviously like in the area of like labor because their labor was essentially being stolen to produce stuff that the grasshoppers didn't even need. And it, it reminds me of just like a lot of people in our society, like people like, for example, like women who take care of, you know, white children, non-white women who take care of white children to have to go home and kind of give their children less care yep. because they don't have, you know, because their resources are being used in other ways. And just the fact that like people can, you know, like the, like how important just like time is. Cause you can just see like once they're able to just produce just for, just enough for themselves and not overproduce or, or I guess over harvest, then they're able to have much more leisure time. They're able to, because if they were stuck in that cycle forever, they would have never, like Flick is like a one in a, is like a special person because of their circumstances. But there's probably so many Flicks in that group of people if they just had had the time to just sit and think you know, but because they're constantly working, they don't have that time. Yeah. What injustices did you see? Like, um, um, injustices like having an imbalance of power or like people not being treated, people being mistreated. Oh, I guess animals. <laughs> definitely the ants are getting mistreated by the grasshopper things and they and they're being mistreated because the grasshoppers kept on taking their their labor and the thing that I didn't I saw that was really bad in the movie is that like the ants kept on like doing it and then how they had a rush cuz they they thought that um that he was gonna do the wrong thing with like the wrong bird like the bird wasn't gonna work they, they were going so fast and they were like oh my god we're not, we're not gonna have enough in time and it's just sad that they have to do stuff they have to like get the labor t to to make for the for the grasshoppers and then for them before the rain comes and it's just really sad they have to do this a waste of labor just for the grasshoppers. Can the grasshoppers just do it themselves? <laughs> like they have yeah. bodies. Not like not not like they don't have bodies. 
And what's so funny is they keep saying it's like the natural order, but really the natural order would be like to produce enough for your group, right? Yeah. And like for your group to to do what it can. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. Like, like in the, and then they're just, they're just like, oh, the ants, they're like tricking them by saying, you guys are not powerful. But then when, what is the guy's name? Flick. Flick. When Flick said, oh, you guys are powerful, more powerful than the grasshoppers. Then they, they go out together and they're like, yeah. Because in real life, ants are super powerful. Like, they can just kill a cockroach in like one second. Yeah. Because they went I mean, to Ants are like a really organized like group. And they like are willing to sacrifice for the other. For like the betterment of like the whole colony. And stuff I just like feel that. bad because they keep on squishing them. Yeah. Is Stop funny. squishing. <laughs> That's true. After watching Slug's Life and Ants, I definitely stopped squishing for such a long time. But before that, I used to be very um, experimental, especially the ones that could fly. I used to use my glasses and magnify them with the sun. I, I, yeah, I used to do that as a kid. I, 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 used, I used to just, when I was bored, just go outside, crush the ants. They had uh, sex. Sucks to suck. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. I was gonna. Um. What else is I gonna ask? Um. How do you, I have a question about um the 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 ant colony, and um how they swayed in hope and then built built in hope. How do you feel the bug that movie relates to real life in terms of the way that they were swayed to um, believe in the cause versus being afraid and having to run and try and pick it in time. How do you, can, you how, repeat the, can you repeat the question again? Sorry, yeah. So how does um, the ant colonies um, behavior in terms of how they went from being brave to being afraid, how do you feel, think um, that story relates to us in today's society? how black people function in society. Um, Go ahead. Uh, I think uh, for one, um, the uh, the ants didn't didn't know that they outnumbered the uh, grasshoppers for a long time. That's probably why why the uh, the the violence that they were experiencing lasted so long. But once they realized that they outnumbered them and that they were, um, you know, not as over underpowered as they thought they were, they um, kind of gained confidence in their ability to um, protect themselves. And I think that could possibly happen if Black people were aware of the extreme um, threat that they're under while living underneath white supremacy. For example, uh, the ants had no uh, choice but to know. The grasshoppers were, were very honest with them and saying that um, we're gonna like basically use you. And so, um, for like, we're gonna use you forever. Basically, we're gonna use you forever. That's what we. That's what we think you're good for is to be used forever. So. Uh, you know, have fun with that and, and um, you know, just get used to living with that forever. I think if Black people knew that that was a platform, uh, things would happen. Like things would uh, get, get more, uh, I, I, I feel people like would get more serious. Just thinking about, I, I, I was just really thinking right now that like if, um, let's see. it's, it's it's okay. <laughs> but I want to hear what you're thinking. It's it's okay. okay. I'll say. Um. Well, I was just thinking right now. I don't know why I was thinking it. Like all of us, would team up to the white people, but then that uh, all of us people would team up against the white people. <laughs> yeah, but then that definitely would not work. Why not? Because they have guns and stuff. <laughs> And I was just thinking of us as ants. Don't you think that when you think that way, you're thinking like the ants in the movie and not like Flick? Yeah. 
I feel like I just don't. And I and I and I I seen something that when the old the old guys that they were over there and they were like they I, they were still working and it was crazy. I think at, it was the old guys when they were like uh, so old and stuff. And oh he, yeah. He was like um, and then and I remember one time that was really funny. Well, he was doing a push up and he was like, I feel like I'm 70. <laughs> yeah. Is it? He, I don't even know how old he is, but that was super funny. <laughs> uh, I was going to say that that was a very good message as well. Like, because he was using a walking stick at the beginning, and then it's like the spirit of hope and, of hope and, and the good things that's happened re energized him. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's really interesting the way that everyone's mindset changes once they realize the power of the whole, the collective power. Um, I thought that I think that's a really interesting question because I think that the ants are kind of like black people in that they couldn't see themselves beating the grasshoppers. They had to see an outside group coming and saving them. I think a lot of times like black people are waiting for someone to save them. So I thought that was really interesting. And um, I think it was only until they were literally like pushed to the brink, like they're at the point where they don't have any food for them. Like the grasshoppers are there super upset and they're about to like pretty much kill them. It had to get that far before the ants could actually like believe in themselves and like come together. And sometimes I think that, and I, what uh, Mr. N was saying is was is really, really interesting. Cause I'm wondering now, like, it's true, you know, like the grasshopper is very like in your face, like very obvious about his objectives. I am here to control you. I'm here to make you guys do this for me. But like under the system we have right now, it's much more covert and subtle. And it's almost like the hypnosis is even stronger that I wonder, like, for example, what if they were, what if the head grasshopper was that guy instead, the dopey brother, right? Like, you know what I mean? Because he's supposed to be like a, like the character that's not as bad or something, or he's still complicit in oppressing the ants, but he's just like too dumb that you don't really get like fault him for it or something. And it, it would just be interesting, like, what if he was the leader, you know, would the ants be even more just, like, um, more stuck? Because they're like, well, at least he's nice to us, you know, even though he's, like, oppressing them still. You just, and- you just described our, our situation over here in the UK with Boris Johnson's prime minister. That is the figurehead he plays. He's a jester, so we are very complacent in the um the policies and the things that are going on here that we're not happy about but when he goes on screen and starts dancing everybody laughs and makes memes about it and then another month can go on yeah i like how one of the old guys um i like how when he knew that he was super powerful he tried out push-ups i was like whoa i can do it but i was like i was like good you have power yeah everyone has power you just have to harness it it's like really important to know what's inside you 100%. Yeah, it it reminds me of, like, I feel like the grasshopper, the head grasshopper is almost like a Trump type figure because he just tells, like, the real intentions of the, of the ruling class, the white supremacists. But, like, now we have Joe Biden who's, like, bombing places and, like, not giving, you know, poor people money and all this stuff. And nobody, everyone's just, like, quiet about it. And it's like because a, ni- a nice face is doing it for you or something. I have, I think that is a really interesting point. Yeah, and, and I was like yeah, I the, the the flag guy, the like the the grasshopper, like the grasshopper, the head grasshopper's brother. Oh. It's crazy because he was he was like so nice that he was like, oh my god, look, they have so much power. I I I need a I need a survive here. So he was like, oh, I'll just go to the circus and then one day I'll plan my revenge. <laughs> Do you think he's going to try and like um, like come back or something yeah, and take like, over? I feel like he's going to find other grasshoppers. He can be like, guys, come on, we're going to do this. Let's fight over the ants. 
it'll be like it'll be it'll be like um it'll be like buds like two and they'll be all doing the stuff and they'll have to fight again that's funny but then Wait, are you also- talking about that grasshopper that went in the circus yeah the the um grasshoppers and, and the, I, I don't know why he kept on saying i'll shut up shut up because he was like always talking living in like fear of his brother but he was still like supporting he was his honest. brother he was honest he and, was very honest I, I like how he tried to give a plan that i feel like he was on the ant side the whole time but he didn't want to go to the ant side because he was scared of his brother because, i mean yeah yeah because he had a plan to like to like um to let's not go to the ants so you already have enough food I feel like when he he just wasn't in charge. Yeah, when he like when when the when the head guy opened the food, he was kind of wasting. But let's not go to that. Wait, so then do you guys think because this movie was obviously made by white people? Do you guys think that white people see themselves in that guy, the white people who made this movie? Yes. Of course. Yeah, I think so too. Definitely. These are where these stories exist in the cartoons. They want. They need some level of awareness in the sense that that's why ants exist. Um, Toy Story, there's always that power dynamic or that um, try that display of society, especially through um, Animal Kingdom, especially in the Animal Kingdom, they showcase it a lot. Um, Kemetic in Kemetic um, teachings, we're actually supposed to learn the Animal Kingdom is one of the when we're learning about um, the world, like you see how um, in your country, elementary is called, called elementary and then it's middle and high. Apparently the, you're supposed to learn the elements. You're supposed to learn the animal kingdom. And then when you're in high school, you're learning um, the things that are like above higher conscious in a sense. And um, we're supposed to master the animal kingdom. And the only way that I feel like unless you're, you're, you've been into it or you follow your passion and you've like, tapped into science from an early age, the insect and animal kingdom, by understanding that it teaches you about biomimicry and how, to how we um, live as human beings, how we're supposed to or can... Okay. Way it t- teaches you about how... Yes, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I'm wondering what characters do you think the white people who watch this or the white people who have written this see themselves in do you think they see themselves because I think they see themselves in that dopey brother who's like the do the so-called do good or like in their minds they think that they are they don't see themselves as being like the ones controlling do you know what I mean or do you think they see themselves I, 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 could, I feel like they will be more on code than the um than the the dopey one I think the dopey behavior in white supremacy is definitely almost an act like the jokes that you, they tell to like calm the situation down or play off a negative situation or confuse or talk around the situation like talking beating around the bush if you if you're a white supremacist, you you, you you know you know very well how to be around the bush, especially when ask, when your employees asking you a question or something they learn first. Like it's a part of the training, in my in my opinion. So like I feel like they can't they can be that that dopey character or they'll like to see themselves as the dopey character, but the underlying attitudes are definitely the main grasshopper because that's what drives the, the behavior to even be in the position that they are in the first yeah. place and then I'm not saying that every determined person is that that way but in order to be a gatekeeper in the industry of I would say any major media company I'd, white supremacists are definitely in the base of that yeah I, I completely agree did you want to uh, say something uh, oh, go. okay that's okay oh okay <laughs> Well, yeah, I wanted to say I completely agree. Like, I always think it's interesting when it's like, okay, like, this is a movie made by Disney, like a company that is literally the grasshopper, right? So it's like, do they, are they just like, like, I always wonder, like, what is their thought process when they're making this movie? Like, 
So I just thought that like that was interesting. I I don't know. I think they're, I think they're higher authentic writers because like I've cried so many times from Disney movie. I, I can't just be that that soft. Either the formula is really really good or like they really are tapping into em- like empath- empathic like stories like um up Wally like yeah. Yeah, I mean, because this is actually one of the rare Disney movies where, like, the actual villain dies. Like, usually something happens mm-hmm. or they, or they like, vanish or they get kidnapped, but they don't actually, like, just die. So I was like, that's really interesting, too. I, I don't know how to decode it, but I just thought that was interesting. Uh, and I thought that was interesting that I didn't really look at that one. You know how the girl who had a ring to that's dark? that i didn't i didn't like that the, they were like you can't fly yet don't try the in the, the but then she tried and then she finally can I, like she was like i'm not gonna listen and then i can do it but, yeah i think yeah that's interesting because it's like sometimes parents get stuck on oh you have to do this at this time but sometimes the kid knows what's what? best it's literally happening in their body so it's like sometimes you have to trust in the youth yeah. Yeah. I agree. I want to answer the question. Uh, I think the white people see themselves as the grasshopper subconsciously or consciously. Those who are aware of what's going on probably see themselves as the grasshoppers while at the same time seeing themselves as Flick, the do gooder, the person who's helping. Uh, his aunts because you know white supremacy has revealed itself to be very contradictory and i really when white people make contradictions all the time like even in my class today the guy is like i'm not going to um you know put a label on it you know but i will label this film as it's like contradictions just saying you're not going to do something and then doing it right <laughs> afterwards it's just like um but yeah, I think that's what they will see themselves as. And uh, Mary, I like them on Miss Nebula. I think uh, um, White is very good at creating empathy while feeling it. Uh, there is a formula for these films. All of these films exist to brainwash you. They don't <laughs> exist to make you feel anything. But I need to change my, my button. I'm just saying they uh, these films do not exist to... Um, empower you at all they exist they, they, they exist to sedate you and um the, the people writing them are white males primarily um, yeah. um, speaking of white males sorry um do you remember the part where dot 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 and flicks relationship what's your, what your what's your thoughts on dot and flicks relationship Um, I mean, it's it's, he, it's Flix is a uh, adult Ant Man, and um, Dot is is a, a a female child. Uh, it, 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 the film presents it as a loving relationship where they learn from each other, but um, it's a Disney film, and uh. What's that? Um, I don't know if it's my wife. Oh, sorry. I, I wanted to say I, I really liked what a cert was saying about um, pe- white people seeing themselves as flick. Because yeah. it reminds me of um, Yurugu, like the mad scientist type trope, or like the, the kind of like I forgot what that word is, like the misunderstood genius. Yeah. I think a lot of white people see themselves as that. So I thought that was like a really like accurate observation. I, th- I, I don't know. Do you want to answer the question about Flick and Dot's relationship? I didn't I, I think, think about it. That much. I feel like Dot and I feel like Dot and Flick are close because they like hug each other and stuff like that. Like, oh my God. <laughs> Do you think that because like they they see themselves, do you think because they're like different within 
that colony? Do you think that that's why like they're closer? I, f I feel like it's because Dot believes in like Flit so much. I feel like they, I feel like she just likes his, his invention and then they just get along. Cause I feel like maybe one day when she gets older, she'll be like creative like Flit. Cause she was like, whoa, he inspired and yeah and she she ends up doing that right when she's when they're in the bird is she the one that was leading the like was she the one that was like leading which direction they went? Yeah. yeah she was like left. Yeah, she, she was like right um, yeah i had a i um about dot and flick i thought it was interesting the scene where they're like he's talking about the seed and how the seed forms into like a tree. One, I thought that was interesting because she kept being like, it's a rock. And I was like, okay, like this is kind of weird because I feel like if these represent like non-white people, she would understand the metaphor or like see the metaphor. Like we're supposed to, like we're, we don't really, like if we go by Urugu, like we don't think in a very like rational way. So we would be able to get that. But I did think that that metaphor was interesting in terms of like the idea of progression and white people being kind of obsessed with the idea of like from the seed like you will become the tree but like you know the seed in and of itself is like a, this nutritionally dense thing that's small but it has so much capacity for like nourishment so I just thought that was interesting. Like, do you really have to be the tree? Is this like the white idea of like, when once you're tall and big as a tree, you know, like you have, mm -hmm. I don't know, like you have power or you have purpose. Like your purpose is to be this big tree. I thought that mm -hmm. was interesting. Like, I, feel, I don't know if it's I feel accurate. Like the, I feel like the seed is the most important thing as a tree because the seed is like the whole purpose of the whole tree. I, I I do remember that conversation. Um, I think I think that's actually around the, the point where I was where I was driving my conclusions. I definitely agree with Zuri as well. I see it definitely as a, a mentorship relationship, and um, because she she's innovative as well, mm -hmm. that that it was very much like mentorship, um, mm -hmm. and. The only thing that I would say that um, I I noticed it I noticed being like an echo in um, animation or cartoons, especially written by white directors, is this relationship that it's almost reminiscent of um like it's definitely not the early temple style, but it's just like the girl who um, the only person who gets the the older misunderstood man older man sort of thing but um that i'm maybe reading too much into it it's, it's not a lot into it it's not a lot in this but the the scene literally is her him shouting at her and then she goes you're weird i like you <laughs> it's like oh. you just screams in your face but you, you know you're weird but i guess it was pertaining to the conversation prior to that which you're talking about which is the scene yeah. Yeah, I think she like doesn't see him as an actual threat, so he can do that, and she's just like, "Haha, you're just like, I'm, I'm royalty. You're a loser." <laughs> yeah, and I really love what you said as well about um, the fact that they live somewhere else, so they can kind of have that relationship, and it's not like, what's the word? Um, corrupted. It's not a corrupted relationship or corrupted mentality because. Them, they're outside of the modern music society and can have more in, in intimate roles in the community. I agree. Do you guys have any other thoughts or questions or did you guys, did we want to go to closing comments? Yeah, I have nothing question. This is more random uh, uh, analysis. So I noticed in a film that uh, Dumper and Hopper are both symbols. Uh, Hopper is a symbol for um, logic and strategic uh, tenacity. 
And um, Pierre controlled dominance and chaos well. Dumper is also, you know, he's half of um, of Hopper, because Dumper and Hopper, the words are very similar. They kind of imply similar things. Dumper is pure rage and emotion. And um, he's very much trained uh, by Hopper. And he's like kind of his, like his, um, his hound dog. And then there are several scenes in the film where uh, the, hot, the grasshoppers, their flesh peels, and it's like this white color. Very, very interesting. I think uh, Dumper is kind of an albino uh, grasshopper as well. So I don't know. That's something that I know about the film. I wanted to see if anyone had noticed that if, or if they agree, agree with what has been said. I thought when you had said that during the movie, I thought that was an amazing observation. I thought um, and then definitely Hump, Thumper or Hopper, like even having similar names, like you said, it just seems like a manifestation is inner desire is just physically, just a physical representation of what he's done, but he's the contained ordered, ordered logic version of it. But that, that's just it as chaos. That's what he manifests. And he has to feed that demon, you know, by scaring other people to. Well, um, should we move to closing comments? Yeah, I think we should. Sorry, my mom left for a little bit. Huh? Um. Well, uh, I think I think this was a really good movie. I like how he decoded a lot of stuff about it, and um, I think that it was like interesting that like all this stuff like about flake and that I I I liked that in the end they were happy and they got to see how strong they were. Like I like how I like how they they were like oh I'm so strong now and they know who what their purpose is and stuff and not not that their purpose is to um to give the grasshoppers a food so I like that part. Mm -hmm. I'd say for me. My closing comments, I really loved um, going down nostalgia lane with this um, bug life and really getting to hear the character's personalities more now and see the messages behind it. I feel like this is a great movie representation for white, the white, white supremacy. Um, I feel like the next answer to any kind of animation that follows the same blueprint is to look for more solutions. What happens now, because white supremacy will attack again, um, the more of a, like, um, a, a real analyzation of um, ant colonies and how they actually operate and incorporate in that. Um, I love the variety and diversity of different accents in this as well, because it was a beautiful representation of all the different creatures as well. I like that it just showed the different flavors of nature. And of course it showed overall on top of the, the inter intellectual um, um, battle of, cause that's what it really is. Um, once they had, once the ants had found out that they were, there was more of them, actually by being brave, they couldn't, they couldn't be, um, they couldn't be destroyed anymore, but the bird, whether it speaks English or not, it has power and dominion over it because it can fly higher or whichever. So it, I liked how it showed that nature will always win in its own way. You just, but um, through intellect and not allowing um, power dynamics to affect that intellect, they can thrive, especially united together.
everybody's at heart they just have they just have to stay want stay um curious <laughs> Uh, I love that it was a flick at heart. Um, Mike, for, for my only comments, um, I think this is a really um, great, uh, awesome movie. Uh, and it really does a great job by showing what it takes to uh, fight oppression. It takes a village, it takes, you know, the woman, it takes the children, it takes the, the, the men. And um, it's definitely possible, and it takes knowledge of uh, one standing in, in society. And it's, it's not impossible. And uh, I appreciate this film even more now as an adult because I'm able to see what it's about. It's definitely about white supremacy, um, definitely about uh, a system in which uh, non white people are being oppressed, you know. And, they have to uh, stand up for themselves and, you know, you know, no longer be oppressed. It's just a system of justice. A great film. Um, yeah, a lot of messages in there. I'm sure I missed, I missed a ton, but I'll watch it throughout. I'll revisit it in a few more years. Yeah, um, I agree with what you said. I've seen this movie, but like, I appreciate it so much more as an adult, especially like with the reading that we're doing, I feel like there's a lot of interesting ways it can be interpreted. And I really appreciated watching it with everyone because I think there were a lot of things that I didn't even notice that you guys did that now I'm going to be thinking about. And it's just like mm -hmm. really, it's really, um, I think like what Sert was saying about these films kind of being like tools of like to sedate us is really interesting and I think that at least us having this like group where we're decoding it is taking away that kind of power of just like making us mindless drones because we're being much more critical of it which is I think is really good and I think it's really good for Z too because then she can be a lot more critical about all the media because I think a lot of kids are constantly watching stuff and nobody is asking them about it or talking about it with them. So I'm glad that like we are, we're, we're able to like share this. It's really cool. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, yeah, that, I, I shared the sentiment. Thank you for that. Did everyone go? I, also, I just do you remember the, the baby book club? Huh? The, the ladybug remember the ladybugs book club the book club that they had no sorry the clubhouse they had yeah they're a little it like... reminded me of <laughs> see oh. the rest of the book club <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny that makes sense though well, we are gonna when end... they all went in the room. <laughs> we're gonna end the recording so yeah i'm gonna stop okay. the recording now because uh yeah bye Okay. Bye.